channel if it's your first time in this channel don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button so that you will be notified if there are any videos that I will be uploading soon now for today's video I will be discussing or give you a brief uh, explanation what is transmission based precautions now there are two tiers of your isolation precaution these are your standard precaution and your transmission based precautions now, when we talk about standard precautions, this is previous, previously called as your universal precautions. These are precautions that is intended to be applied to the care of patients in all healthcare settings, regardless of the suspected or confirmed presence of infectious agents. Now, examples of your standard precaution is we have your hand hygiene, which I already discussed uh, in my previous video. We also have your PPE or the use of your personal protective equipment. We have your cuff etiquette or your respiratory hygiene. We also have your safe injection practices, cleaning and disinfection of surfaces. Now the second tier of your isolation precautions is we have your transmission-based precaution. Transmission-based precaution are precautions applied to patients who are known or suspected to be infected or colonized with infectious agents. Now, we have three types of your transmission-based precautions. We have your airborne precaution, we have your droplet precaution, and your contact precautions. Let's discuss those three precautions one by one. We'll start first with your airborne precaution. Now, your airborne precautions, these are precautions that you are going to apply for patients who are known or suspected to have airborne transmitted diseases. Examples of your airborne transmitted diseases is we have your tuberculosis, we have your measles, we have your varicella and your shingles, which is the activation of your chickenpox virus. Your airborne precautions, guys, these are precautions that prevent transmission of infectious agents that remain infectious over long distance when suspended into the air. Now, for patients with airborne transmitted diseases, the particles that they produce, if they are going to cough, to sneeze, or even talking, it will suspend into the air. Particles of your airborne transmitted infections, guys, these are very lightweight. The size of your uh, airborne transmitted uh, diseases, the particles, it's less than 5 microns in size. Since it is very lightweight and it will suspend into the air, it can also travel to a long distance. Now, let's say for example, I am here in my office. If I cough or if I sneeze, the particles that I produce will travel to a long duration or distance. Okay? Those patients or those people who did not came in contact with me or who did not come in contact with me, they might also get the infection. Now, what is the most important PPE if you will be handling or dealing with patients who has um, airborne transmitted infections or if the patient is on airborne precaution, okay? The most important PPE is we have your N95 mask, your N95 mask. I know that all of you are familiar already with the N95 mask. So it offers uh, more protection compared to your regular mask or your surgical mask or your face mask. If you are in the healthcare set setting, make sure that you underwent or undergo fit testing for your N95 mask before you will handle patients who are on airborne transmitted, uh, who are on uh, airborne precautions or those patients who have airborne transmitted infections. Now, where are we going to place all those patients who have airborne transmitted infections? Now, the room assignment for your airborne precautions is we have your airborne infection isolation room or your negative pressured rooms. Now, why are we going to put those patients in a negative pressured room? When we talk about negative pressured room, guys, these are rooms that sucks air. It sucks air. Meaning to say, all the particles or aerosols that is being produced by the patient, 
inside the negative pressure room, it will not go out. Okay, since it sucks air. In that way, we are, we are trying to protect the patients or people or healthcare practitioners outside the patient's room. If you're going to open the door of a patient in a negative pressure room, the air from the outside will go inside. The air from uh, inside the patient's room will not go out. That is in contrast with your positive pressure room. Your positive pressure rooms, these are rooms intended for uh, patients who are immunocompromised. Examples of your other examples of your positive pressure rooms is we have your operating rooms. Since we are trying to keep the your OR theater or OR, OR suite as clean or as sterile as possible. Your positive pressure room it gives air. Meaning to say if you're going to open the door of the patient, the air from the outs from the inside of the patient's room will go out. Thus preventing the air from the outside going uh, going uh, inside the patient's room since we are protecting the patient inside. Any infectious particles from the outside cannot enter the room of the patient. The second type of your transmission-based precaution is we have your droplet precaution. Your droplet precaution are intended to prevent transmission of pathogens spread through close respiratory or mucous membrane contact with respiratory secretions. In contrast with your airborne, uh, airborne diseases or infections, your droplet-transmitted infections, the pathogens, they do not remain infectious over a long distance. Examples of your uh, droplet-transmitted diseases is we have your Neisseria meningitis, we have your pertussis, your influenza, and your pneumonia. So those are just common examples of your droplet transmitted infections. Now let's say for example, if a patient who has suspected or if a patient is suspected to have COVID-19 or coronavirus, the mode of transmission of your COVID-19 is droplet uh, transmission. Meaning to say, if a person will cough or sneeze or even talk, the particles that he or she produce, it can travel to a distance up to three feet. Okay, up to three feet. That is why one of the precautionary measures that we need to abide with is we have your social distancing. Social distancing for at least six feet. Okay, because beyond three feet, usually the virus cannot travel anymore. Why? Because the particles that is being produced by a patient who has droplet transmitted infections or diseases, it cannot travel beyond three feet. Okay? The main reason for that is the particles that you produce if you cough, sneeze, or even talk, the particles is very heavy. The size is greater than five microns compared to your airborne which is less than five microns. That is why it's very important to maintain a distance of at least greater than 3 feet from one person to the other. Now the most important PPE for your droplet transmitted infections is we have your medical mask or your surgical mask. Or you can also wear your uh, mask that is made of fabric or cloth. Wearing of masks, especially in this time of pandemic, uh, it is an effective way of uh, limiting or preventing the spread of your coronaviruses. Now this is your mask. Uh, it has two sides, right? The white one and the colored one. The white one, this is what? This is water absorbent. So it absorbs your secretions. Well, the other side, the colored one, this is waterproof. So any secretions or any fluids that you will be, if there is any tendency that you will be exposed to any body fluid exposures, you will be protected. Now patients with uh, droplet transmitted infections, we can just, uh, we can put them in a private room and or if there is no available single room, we can cohort patients with the same case. So the next type of your transmission-based precaution is we have your contact precaution. 
Your contact precaution, these are precautions intended to prevent the transmission of any infectious agents which can be spread through indirect or direct contact. Direct or indirect contact with the patient or the patient's environment. Examples of your um, examples of diseases that uh, in which you are going to apply your contact precautions is we have your patients with multidrug resistant organisms, patients with COVID-19. Uh, there are some also droplet transmitted infections that can be acquired through contact transmission. That is why one of the precautionary measures that we need to follow in, this, uh, in these times is we have your hand hygiene. It could either be hand washing or your uh, hand rubbing. Now in the healthcare setting, the most important personal protective equipment that you need to have if you will be handling patients under contact precaution is your gloves and your gown. These three types of your transmission-based precautions, they can go hand in hand. Let's say for example, you can combine airborne and contact, droplet and contact. But with all the types of your transmission-based precautions, there should always be the application of your standard precaution. Let's say for example, standard precaution plus airborne and contact. Standard precaution plus droplet and contact. For your COVID-19, uh, based on the guidelines from the World Health Organization, there are four major uh, precautionary measures that we need to apply. First is we have your hand hygiene. As what I have mentioned, your COVID-19, it can be transmitted through contact. Contact with any surfaces, any objects, or any person. Next is we have your social distancing. Droplet transmitted infections, usually it will travel for up to 3 feet. So try to maintain a distance of greater than 3 feet or at least 6 feet from one person to the other. Next is we have your uh, surface cleaning and disinfection. So since it can be transmitted through contact, we need to make sure that every surfaces or anything that we came in contact with are clean and disinfected. Then the fourth one is we have your, the use or your, we need to wear your, we need to wear our mask. Now masking guys, it can limit the spread of your particles if you're going to talk, cough or sneeze. So that's all for your transmission based precautions guys as well as a brief explanation of your uh, precautionary measures of our COVID-19. So I hope that you have learned something from this video. If you find this video useful, helpful, or informative, don't forget to share. And if you have any additional information uh, with regards to the topic, don't forget to comment below. Don't forget to like guys. I hope that you have learned something from this video. And don't forget to subscribe and watch out for my upcoming videos. Thank you and God bless.